Hello, I'm Atubo John. Now today is Friday. Praise God. Oh, the word of God is just sweet. I don't know. I don't know how you live. I don't know how you live without hearing the voice of God. I don't know how you live. Listen, do everything you need to do to hear the voice of God. Now when I mean hear the voice, I'm just talking, my son. Get up. I'm saying it comes to you regularly, normally. You wake up in the morning, you're hearing the voice of God teaching you. And the Lord's just saying to you, son, you remember what Joshua said in Joshua chapter 4 and verse 2? Um, yeah, okay, let me check in my Bible. Is it, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me tell you something about it. Okay, Lord, I'm listening. This is what it means. This is what, oh, whoa, wow, <laughs> wow. You know, sometimes you're, you're just reading your Bible like, whoa! <laughs> and so I'm like, what's wrong with it? Oh, they don't know. It's not the reading, it's the hearing. <laughs> you know, that's why I keep saying, we, we, I don't read my Bible. I say, hey, can you imagine? Pastor just say he doesn't read Bible. Listen to me, <laughs> praise God. I hear the word of God. That's what I do with my Bible. I pick it up. I'm looking at it, but I'm hearing. I'm looking at it, but I'm hearing. See? So we may be reading the same chapter and verse together. Like, oh! <laughs> wow! I'm like, what happened? What did you see? And I read it again. Did you see? And then the person's like, yeah, I read it. Oh, you don't understand. Look at it very well. Look at it very well. Yeah. Read it again. Yeah. And you're wondering, what's wrong with you? Can't you see what I'm saying? No, no, no. You didn't see nothing. You heard a voice, praise God. You heard the voice of the Lord. Mm. I pray that becomes your portion. Your portion when that this is what makes this thing exciting. This is this is why this is why someone can be in his room all day without even stepping out. Yo, what are you doing? Reading Bible from morning to night. What is wrong with you? You don't understand. You don't understand. David said, Your word, when I find your word, is like someone who has found great spoil. <laughs> I just hold on to it, like, no man, I've got to dig. I've got to, you know, some, you, they, they, most times these things are not even planned. That happens to me severally. I said, okay, I'm going out by, by maybe I'm going out by 9 o'clock, or I'm going, to, going out by 10 a.m. And I tell my wife I'm going out by 10 a.m. But then, and then she comes on like, like, oh, wow. You know, I'm just, wow. Wow. I thought you we were going out by 10. Um, I'll soon go out. I'll soon go out. And I'm there. 12, 1, 2. I thought you said you were going out. Yeah. <laughs> I found some spoils. Praise God. I'm feasting. I'm feasting on this thing. I'm not just reading it. See, I've tried reading the Bible. It's kind of boring. It's boring to you because you're reading a book. But when you begin to hear the voice of God, Ayakabusha, yeah. <laughs> you'll be there for days. When you say, somebody read the Bible all night, say, what is he looking for? What is the it's not the reading, it is the fellowshipping. I've, I've several times, oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Several times I've sat down, you know, studying the scriptures, and, and by the Spirit of God, I'm transported back in history. I've, that has happened to me several. I'm transported back in history. And I'm, I find myself there. And, and all these things that we read about is happening. And I'm there. And I see the expression of faces. I, I understand. The, that, that's how I get to understand certain statements made in scriptures. I understand the meaning perfectly. It's, it's the working of the Holy Spirit. And the funny thing is, not because I desire, not because I say, Lord, can you take me back in time? I want to understand. You know, see, when you fellowship with the Lord, now I, I say it now, someone hears me, I say, ah, I've seen, ah, prayer point. Father, ah, Pastor George said he used to take him through the spirit, you know, to the past and say, Lord, I want that experience. Now remember, I didn't pray for it. I didn't pray for it. See, 
I was just fellowshipping with the Lord. Now, I remember one time I was praying, yeah, several years ago, I used to pray and say, Lord, I want to see Jesus. Reveal Jesus to me, Lord. I, because you've heard several testimonies. Someone said, Jesus walked into my room, you know, and I didn't, you know, the Lord spoke to me about it. He, he spoke to me about it first, then he confirmed it through Kenneth Copeland. I was listening to Kenneth Copeland one time. He, he said the same thing. If I was I like, oh, that's me, that's me, praise God. And he said, Jesus said, don't. If you continue praying like this, Satan is going to show up and you will think I'm the one. And he will deceive you from that moment. Now, now, that's not exactly what the Lord told me when he spoke to me. Now, from Kenneth Copeland, I heard it the second time. But, but what the Lord told me, says, stop praying this prayer. I'll reveal to whomsoever I But you are not disadvantaged because you have not had the kind of vision they have. But I still reveal myself to you with the understanding that I bring to you. And I got that. I said, yes, sir. Because the one who Jesus walked into his bedroom every day is not greater than you who haven't had that experience. As long as you hear the voice of God and you follow the leading of the Holy Ghost, that person who Jesus walks into his bed can even become disadvantaged. How? Now, he'll be waiting for that experience to happen before he does anything. But we know that, that's not, that Jesus is not limited to operating that way. So, I received that from the Lord. I said, thank you, Lord. Thank you, sir. I know what to do. And I began to fellowship. Then he began to open my understanding to his truth. He began to open my... Then I began to have those experiences. Where I'll just be... I'm studying scriptures. Then I'm, suddenly I'm, I'm somewhere else. And I'm with Peter. I'm with Jesus and his disciples. I'm there. And I see Jesus talking. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. And then I, I, I come back... And I read it again. I'm like, they missed something here. <laughs> Praise God. Oh, they missed something here. That was the kind of experience I had. I was studying, Matt, um, I'm sorry, I was studying John. When he went for the wedding. John chapter 2. And, and I was transported. And I, was, I found myself in that wedding. And I'm like, uh -huh. Why didn't they say it was Jesus' sister that was getting married? <laughs> How did I know that? I saw myself at the wedding. Just several years, several years ago. I saw myself at the wedding. I'm like, there's a family wedding going on here. Jesus' sister is getting married. And they are in charge of the wedding. And then I came back to her and I said, Oh, no wonder the servants went to Mary the mother of the bride, to say, wine is finished. And Mary said, go meet the big brother. <laughs> she didn't say, go meet the big brother because he is Jesus. She said, go meet him because he is the elder brother. You understand what I'm saying? He's his sister that's getting married. So she was conferring on him the responsibility. And they, 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 they went to Jesus. They said, what do we do, sir? And Jesus said, okay, mm. Fill up the water pots. Okay. Fill up the water pot. Why? It's their wedding. We are servants. Anything Augusta we should do, that's what we would do. So they were not thinking miracle. No, they were not. It was just normal. Okay, fill up the water. Fill up the water pot. Now fetch from the water pot that you just filled and go and give to the governor. And then fetch from the water pot and go and give to the governor. How? Just do it. And it's their wedding now. The governor is the that's the governor is like the chairman of the occasion. And then they fetch and give to the governor. The man drinks, drinks the like wow. Man, you guys are just too much. You've kept the best wine till the end. And then someone looked at himself. <laughs> is this the plan? <laughs> is this how they want to deceive people in this wedding? You know? And they're like, what's going on here? Like, oh, serve it, serve it, serve everybody. Someone said, I'm like, Ross, is wine new? Is it wine? Uh -uh. Is it not where he fetched that water from? Ross, like, hey, like that in his wine we're fetching. We didn't know it was wine. No, now. But it's not from the well. It is. 
Ah, uh, go and fetch. Uh, it's water. But this one is wine. <laughs> well, they enjoyed their wedding and they finished and everybody went home. Jesus has given his sister, his younger sister out in marriage. <laughs> Praise God. You understand? Now, that's why they were in that wedding in the first place with his disciples because his sister was getting married. Just like your pastor's younger sister is getting married. You will all go for the wedding. You know what I mean? If you, if you love your pastor and you're committed to him. So that's what happened. Now, how did I know that? Nobody taught me. Because I was transported. So several things, several things in scriptures. And that's how a perfect understanding comes to me from scriptures. So when I begin to speak this, it's all like, how did you know these things? It's the Spirit of God. It's the Spirit. Even as I don't, I don't pray, say, Lord, can we, can we do some transporting today? At His will. At His will. You, you don't even know, I'm coming to transport you now. You're just fellowshiping with Him and suddenly you're, you're in an environment. And like, wow. And then you're just a spectator looking at everything going on. And then you come back here like, wow. Okay, I understand now. Oh, wow. This is what Jeremiah meant when he said this. Listen to me. The Holy Spirit. You know, Jesus said, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. How has he come to us? Through the Holy Spirit today. And the Holy Spirit, he said, will teach us all things. And guess what he said? He will guide you into all truth. That's what he's been doing in my life, praise God. Listen, there is no truth I know that I don't walk in. I don't know it for head knowledge. It is by experience. Actually, the truth comes from the place of living it. <clears throat> you, know, you know, Jesus said, if you abide in me, he said, I am the vine. My father is the husbandman. And, and, and we are the branches. Then he said something very, very important. Every branch in me that bears fruit, my father prunes so that it will bear more fruit. How does the father prune? He says, you are prone through the words that I have spoken unto you. So the Lord taught me that. He says, son, any time you are bearing fruit with my word, I will come and give you more depth. I will come and give you more insight into that word. What's he doing? He's pruning you. Why? So you bear more fruit. <clears throat> so when we talk about tithing and you begin to obey and begin to do what the Lord wants you to do with his tithe, you begin to take it to him and practice that. You wait for his voice and then he will speak to you on what to do with the tithe. You obey him. You begin to do that. Suddenly, suddenly the Lord will come and start teaching you the same way he's teaching you. He will come and say, do you know what? You know what you just did? This is what the scripture means when he says, whoa, whoa, wow, wow. And let me tell you the truth. You see this, that teaching from the Holy Spirit, that teaching, now what's it? He's guiding you into all truth. That is what is going to sustain your receiving. That's what's going to sustain your receiving. See, it's going to sustain your receiving. Because now you are in real fellowship. It's not a one-way thing. Now you started the journey approaching him with, your, with, with, with his tight. But then he's, he's responded to you by speaking to you. And then you begin to real, walk in that real fellowship. He will come and teach you. Is it healing? When you begin to practice your faith on healing, what happens? He will come to teach you more. He will come and prune you. He will prune you. Is it walking in righteousness? When you begin to practice it, he will come and he will prune you. And guess what? The more he prunes you, the more easy it is. The more he prunes you, the more easy it is. This is how we walk this walk. Praise God. And this is how we never get broken. Never. I mean never. When I say never, never. I, I, I can never remember the last time I was ever stranded in my life. Never. Maybe yes. Many, many. I, I can't even remember. I try to think back. I can't remember. Because even when I didn't know this much, the Lord always showed up. But he is establishing it through his teachings. 
So now I know what to expect. I don't see that one. Well, God, I know he will show. I just know he will show. Because I'll ask him, well, what do you want? What would you have me do? He said, this is what I want. Thank you, sir. I do it. And he shows up. Father, we bless you. <clears throat> I release. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. I release an unction right now upon everyone that is watching and listening to me. An unction to know your truth. And an unction to hear your voice. Lord, I ask that you make your voice louder in their hearts, that they will hear you. And let them begin to enjoy this fellowship of hearing your voice and finding the faith in their hearts to obey you. That their lives will begin to spring forth fruits where your truth is concerned, in the area of finances. For the testing that is coming on the earth, you have made provision for your children. Let them find it by walking in your truth. Thank you, Father. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Step out this weekend and walk in truth. I'll see you on Monday. Bye-bye.